Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I present a game featuring a proxied version of one of the upcoming Necron Faction Warlords from the deluxe expansion Legions of Death. It is Onrakir the Traveler played by Guy Lev. He's up against Kugoth Plaguefather piloted by Parker Ince and at the moment both of our players are deciding whether or not they want to keep their opening hands. Our initiative token resides with Kugoth, the second Chaos Faction Warlord whom, as a reaction upon attacking shifts, damage off of himself and onto enemy units, but Onrakir at the bottom of our screen is much more interesting. Onrakir is the second spoiled Necron Warlord, he's a 2-7, he starts the game with 7 resources, 7 cards, he's a 2-7 himself self looks like Parker has decided to mulligan his opening hand and uh, Guy instead is keeping. Uh, the premise behind Onrakir is fueling his discard pile, so as a deploy action you can deploy, that means you pay uh, for the topmost unit card in target discard pile. As we're entering our deploy phase, our Necron player is going to have to set his enslavement dial. So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to ask uh, what our enslavement enslavement dial is going to be set to, and at the beginning of each and every deploy phase, Guy at the bottom of the screen is going to have to pick one of our first seven factions uh, to be enslaved. He calls out Eldar, and that means he can deploy any Eldar faction and neutral and Necron units uh, during the deploy phase. So, just in assessing Guy's hand, we've got a slew of Necron units, we've got a Neutral, and we also happen to see an Eldar as well, one of our newest army units. Uh, looks like at planet number one, we actually see Inquisitor Caius Roth. So he's a 3-5, and he's got a reaction where after he enters play, each player has to discard down to four cards in hand if able. But this actually works out kind of favorably because, again, Onrakir wants to be able to uh, deploy units from discard card piles, so in discarding cards, it kind of acts like an extension of his hand. We haven't seen any army units discarded by Parker, so therefore there aren't any Chaos units eligible for Onrakir's effect, uh, but he went ahead and discarded that uh, same Han Kinsman because he'll be able to put it into play from his discard pile, so it's as if he had, uh, you know, discarded down to five cards in hand, whereas his opponent uh, had to suffer, suffer the full penalty of that effect. So we've got a slew of new Necron cards. Guy has two copies of Deathmark Assassins in hand. For the cost of three, it's a 2-3. No command icons whatsoever, and when the combat phase begins, you uh, discard the top card of your deck, and it gets a an ephemeral attack bonus. So until the end of the phase, it gets plus X attack, where X is the cost of the card you discarded. So if it's a five-cost card, then it's going to be attacking as a 7-3 for the entire uh, combat phase, so that's potentially pretty ridiculous. Here at planet number three, we've got a copy of Tomb Blade Squadron. It's another one of our new spoiled Necron units. For the cost of three, it's a two command icon, zero three, and after you deploy a non Necron scout, you can move this to any planet you'd like, and then a target non Warlord unit at that planet gets minus one HP until the end of the phase, so it is absolutely superb uh, for murdering rogue traders, void pirates, incubus warriors. Uh, recon drones, anything with one hit point stands to get annihilated, and if you can play multiple scouts during one round, uh, then that can just work out fantastic. But here at planet number two, note that because we want to actually see our Necron Warlord perform and not just get stomped, uh, because our Necron faction only has one revealed two shield icon card among, you know, not having a full card pool to work with in this proxy video, um... Parker is actually playing a very unconventional Nurgle heavy deck because on Rakir does a lot of discard pile fueling. Uh, he's including some unusual cards in his deck like the Virulent uh, Plague Squad, so it's a four cost one four, but it does happen to get an additional one attack for each unit in the opponent's discard pile. And at present, uh, that is one unit. Uh, let me verify that that's not exact. Uh, it is actually two units. So I'll talk about our signature arm 
arm unit once we move past our command phase here, but looks like Kugoth shows up at planet number four, Karnath, the wild card, trigger any other battle ability planet, and on Rakir instead arrives at five. So it's going to be Parker reeling in four cards and a resource relative to, uh, looks like it was a total of three resources and one card for Glaive Guy. So he's yet to actually... Uh, acquire all of his income, but he's in the process of doing that now. Note that we've got this Rotten Plague Bears positioned at planet number three. As an action, it can deal a point of damage to this Tomb Blade Squadron, and at the moment it uh, is promoted, and therefore it's sitting at uh, three command icons. Both of our players are passing on any actions, and it looks like on Rakir is going to end up winning planet number one entirely uncontested, so that's Aatrox Prime captured. It's uh, a tech and a red material icon for our Necron player, and that's a point of damage to the Virulent Plague Squad. So, uh, at the moment, Guy has got a copy of the same Han Kinsman in his discard pile. He might use the next turn's deploy phase to put it into play if he chooses Eldar again with his uh, enslavement dial, and then at a green planet, it's a 2-2 two -two for 1 with 1 command icon. Uh, looks like Kugoth won the battle at Karnath uncontested. He triggered fair to route the Tomb Blade Squadron, so it's a two-command icon unit that's going to be re-entering play exhausted, uh, so it's not really doing a whole hell of a lot of good unless we see scouts put into play like this uh, same Han Kinsman here, and uh, we see routed thanks to Farron being won by on Rakir, the Virulent Plague Squad. Uh, another card we've got to look forward to is this Gauss Flayer. It's a one-cost attachment. You stick it on a Necron faction army unit, and then as a combat action, a target enemy army unit at its planet uh, gets minus 2 HP, albeit at the cost of exhausting the attached unit, and that's a cumulative effect where if you can uh, have it exhaust multiple times over the course of the combat phase, that's a lot of minus HP that stacks up rather quickly, and uh, between that, between damaging effects, you can definitely clear out some enemy units, but we've got an HQ phase that is by now passed. It's four resources and two cards for each of our players. Our new fifth planet is going to be Planum, the moon a non-warlord unit of your choice planet, and planet number one is Iridial the Healing Planet. Guy came across a second copy of his uh, signature army unit. What's interesting about on Rakir is he's actually got five of these in his deck. Guy calls out that his enslavement dial is still set to Eldar, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the same Han Kinsman, and indeed it is being deployed right now thanks to on Rakir's ability, so straight from the discard pile it's going to be played, presumably at a green planet, and uh, uh, after you deploy a non-Necron scout, you can move your Tomb Blade squadron to any planet you'd like, and then that target non-Warlord unit, namely this Splintered Path Acolyte, gets minus one HP, and therefore it is killed. So Parker Ince's Splintered Path Acolyte has been destroyed, and uh, doesn't that about suck? But we've also got a copy of Promotion in hand for on Rakir. He does have a copy of his Pyrian Eternals. Like I was saying, this is going to be a five copy uh, signature army unit, and what's interesting about this soldier is it starts off as a one command icon 1-1, one, one, but for every copy of it you have in your discard pile, it gets plus one attack and plus one HP at present. There's only one copy, so this is going to be a 2-2, two, two. but if you had four copies in your discard pile, then it enters play as a 5-5, five, five, which for the cost of two is pretty damn good if I do not say so myself. So at planet number one, we've got that rotten, well, we have a new copy of Rotten Plague Bears. We've got a copy of Kugoth's Nurglings, a 2-2, where after units move to their planet, they are dealt one point of damage. But also at planet number one, we've got a copy of Canoptech Scarab Swarm. So when it is destroyed, it's a one cost 2-2, two -two, no command icons. You can return a target Necron unit uh, from your discard pile to your hand. So that could be this uh, Pyrian Eternals, uh, I guess, interrupts always occur right before the unit itself is destroyed, so the Canoptex Scarab Swarm cannot be destroyed and then return itself to your hand. Uh, we do have a copy of Deathmark Assassins so that might end up hitting extraordinarily hard. At the moment, on Rakir has got the initiative token, so he will hopefully be able to retain that uh, at this first planet here, and a couple very interesting things happened. We see a copy of Blight Grenades affixed to the Kugoth Snurgling, so it's a one-cost attachment. As a combat action, you can sacrifice it to give the attached unit area effect 2 until the end of the phase, but the 
Scarab Swarm somehow cobbled together the ability to hold and wield a Gauss Flare. Uh, it doesn't look like those Scarabs have opposable thumbs or anything to, uh, you know, pull a trigger on that Gauss Flare, but regardless, uh, now they can exhaust, give minus two HP as an action to the Kugoth Snurglings to kill them uh, prior to their having any ability to attack with area effect two. And then I uh, can only imagine that the Deathmark Assassins are going to be able to readily destroy this copy of Rotten Plague Bears positioned at planet number one. So let's see. Both of our players seem to be in the process of deciding where exactly they want to send their respective warlords. We've kind of been neglecting our Chaos player, what with all the excitement of the, uh, you know, new Necron cards here. But he's got a copy of Fetid Haze, which is going to be able to strip all of the damage off of Kugoth or any other Nurgle trait unit like uh, the Virulent Plague Squad here or the Nurglings. But remember that minus HP does not count as damage. So let us see here. Looks like Parker's going to four that uh, route planet, and on Rakir shows up at planet number one. So looks like he's doing a hell of a lot of bullying. Interestingly enough, on Rakir has just got one red and blue icon. Uh, he's going to be showing up to a Tricon planet, and then I guess if he sets himself up to win at Karnath, he'll be able to uh, win at that one as well. So I guess on Rakir just wanted to make sure that Kugoth was not going to be able to win that planet at all, and this is going to be a total of two planets won by each of our players. So for Parker, it's going to be two cards and two resources, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a card, uh, two cards and one resource instead for Guy. He gets another copy of Inquisitor Caius Roth to, again, deplete his opponent's car uh, hand of cards uh, if this copy of the Inquisitor is killed. And, um... I guess in the meantime, uh, Guy just got a fantastic Necron card here as an action, This and maybe he's going to play it right now. He Yes, he uses Recycle, it's discard two cards from hand, then you draw three cards. So, you could discard your Pyrian Eternals to buff existing copies of Pyrian Eternals that are already in play, uh, and of course, you know, why not ditch your additional copy of Inquisitor Caius Roth, and then draw three cards so you can dramatically improve the card quality of those cards in your hand. So, he drew a new copy of Pyrian Eternals, and I believe he's currently got two of those sitting in his discard pile, so now it's going to be a 3-3 three, three for the cost of two, and it's got a command icon, definitely not bad. We got a copy of the action event, it's the zero-cost reanimation protocol, so you can strip two points of damage off of a Necron faction unit you control, uh, max copy of one, uh, sorry, max one copy per round. At the beginning of our combat phase, we discard the top card of his deck for the Deathmark Assassins note uh, that on Rakir during our next round can pick Eldar for his enslavement dial deploy uh, the same Han Kinsman and if he does that again that's like working as an extension of his hand so the Deathmark Assassins only get a paltry plus one attack value bonus but they're essentially breaking even regarding the vanilla test but important to remember is that they're a scout and uh, well I guess it's a non Necron scout unit that works works with Tomb Blade Squadron, but regardless, Gauss Flare is going to result in the Canoptech Scarab Swarm. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and correct uh, Exhaust Attached Unit, not the attachment for the Gauss Flare. Uh, so why don't I just say for Gauss Flare? All right, just because I want to make sure that we get that, uh, because there's, you know, a big difference. If you can exhaust the unit multiple times, then that's going to be absolutely superb. Uh, so, looks like the Rotten Plague Bear here, as its own action, is going to deal a point of damage to the Canoptech Scarab Swarm. And now, Onrakir is going to have to be rather careful with where exactly he sends this. It's granted going to be showing up exhausted uh, alongside Onrakir, when he's presumably going to be sending his Warlord the following round to planet number, well, at that point it'll be two, it's currently three uh, but I guess once the Scarab Swarm is ready, you know, as a combat action, as soon as it's ready uh, you can potentially kill off one of your enemy's units Iridial is going to be captured by on Rakir, and that is going to be one point of damage uh, purged from this Canoptex Scarab Swarm Kugoth has no damage but we're also going to see, uh, well a battle break out at our current planet number for the Tomb Blade Squadron itself is just a 0-3. It's going to take a point of damage from Kugoth. And now, what, if anything, are we going to see? I suppose it'll swing ineffectually for 0, and then at the end of the combat round, it'll retreat back to the HQ of, um... 
on Rakir, and I guess what I like about that unit is you're going to be able to, like when you deploy a scout, you move it to a planet, and then it starts counting its two command icons for you. Uh, so even if it's not necessarily able to kill the unit that it's directly opposite, um, it can still be perfectly reasonable. But we go through another HQ phase that's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. Uh, I'll go ahead and ask about our enslavement dial, although my heart tells me that it's going to be Eldar unless uh, we want to see this Rotten Plague Bears return to play. Note that our other spoiled Necron warlord Nahumek rewards you for playing multiple non-Necron uh, non factions, but on Rakir doesn't exactly have that same incentive going on. We've got a copy of Eldar Survivalist. We've got that copy of Pyrian Eternals, which should be a 3-3. Um... Looks like we're going to see that copy of Sam Han Kinsman being played again. And doesn't that suck? Parker uh, laments his poor fortune because the Sam Han Kinsman returning to play means that the Tomb Blade Squadron shows up at Planet 5. It again kills that Splintered Path Acolyte. And man, oh man, today is just not Parker's day. So I guess all on Rakir is going to have to do is set himself up nicely at Planet Number 3 to potentially win this one. And uh, Parker's definitely got to get his shit together he doesn't have a whole lot of combat units uh in fact he has none in hand so let's see what if anything parker can do to try to pull this one right out of the trash can we've got a copy of eldar survivalist presumably being placed at, is it gonna be planet number two right the destination for on rakir and uh because it's a scout that's gonna be the tomb blade squadron shifting to planet number three it's gonna be minus one hp for this virulence plague squad i guess uh parker yeah he erroneously added a point of damage but then he added a resource to reflect the fact that it's a minus one hp in addition to its damage but the most important thing is this is now a two command icon unit uh, across from a one command icon unit so i've been trying to talk about this we've got a decaying warrior squad in on uh hand for the cost of two it's a two two no command icons but who cares if it's destroyed because for the cost of two as a combat action you can deploy it straight from your discard pile we've got a copy of Pyrian Eternals that's currently a 3-3 over here at Taurus and uh, let's see what Prince can do. He's got a copy of Promise of Glory to put some cultist tokens into play, but he doesn't have any demons to purchase those with. He's got a copy of Promotion without really anything too fantastic to place it on. Uh, I guess he could have used Promotion on this Virulent Plague Squad just to potentially win a couple of resources at that planet. Uh, but let's see where exactly Kugoth is going to go. Kugoth has got two copies of Fetid Haze. He's also got a copy of Nurgling Bomb, so so Kugoth is not out of this one yet. Looks like Kugoth is going to try to trigger Taurus to presumably win... I don't know if he's going to go for cards or resources, honestly. I suppose at this point he might go for resources. I suppose, yeah, so Parker comes across three cards and one resource. He's now got a copy of Death Guard Infantry. He's got a copy of Slanesh's Temptation. And note, again, that Parker's kind of playing a goofy deck because uh, during my limited playtesting experience with Necrons prior to actually recording some of these games, our Necron Warlords didn't exactly fare very well against... Uh, you know, tier one warlords that are genuinely trying. So this is something a little bit goofy just to ensure that we can show off some of our Necron tech and combos and all that good stuff. But during our command phase, that was three cards, five resources for our Necron player. At the onset of combat, we see a Vashia Trailblazer discarded by the Deathmark Assassins. So it's going to be able to attack for a modified four. Uh, but of course, it's not really going to be participating in combat at its planet. So at planet at number one, the Rotten Plague Bears managed to win entirely uncontested. Uh, the random card discard is Decaying Warrior Squad, so at this point, who cares? Because you can uh, uh, deploy it from your discard pile for two uh, at any planet you'd like, which includes uh, Kugoth's planet. So if our Necron player wants to be a little bit... Um, 
I guess, you know, kind of ballsy, he could multi- uh, potentially return the Decaying Warrior squad to play multiple times. Uh, looks like as a battle ability here at planet number two, on Rakir is going to trigger, uh, Karnath is going to activate Planum to pull the Pyrian Eternals from that planet. And now uh, Prince is going to have to save a lot of resources for those fetid hazes, and he's just going to have to hope to high hell that he can get a lot of, uh, I guess, units played out to that planet. So Taurus is going to activate for Parker. He's going to draw three cards in total. He's currently sitting on 13 cards and six resources relative to Guy's five resources and six cards, but Guy is definitely set up a little bit better than is our Chaos player. So what exactly do we see here? We see our potentially final round occur. This is the HQ phase. It's going to be four resources and uh, two cards for each of our players. So a total of 10 resources, 15 cards for Parker, nine resources, and eight cards instead for Guy. Uh, so Parker's just got one copy of the Kugoth's Nurglings, but he's unfortunately not going to be able to, like all of these units are already sitting at the planet. They're not, um, they're not already, they're not in Onrakir's HQ, so he's not going to be able to, uh, like, deal out a ton of damage to our Necron players' forces when they're moving to a planet. We've got two additional copies of Gauss Flayers, so we could affix these to Necron army units. Like, we could put them on the Deathmark Assassin, we could do them on the uh, Pyrian Eternals. Looks like we've got uh, the Splintered Path Acolyte being deployed from... Uh, the discard pile of our Chaos players, so Splintered Path Acolyte is going to be sitting over here at four, and now what exactly else are we going to see? Guy's got eight resources remaining, he's got Reanimation Protocol to help strip a couple of points of damage from a Necron unit, including his Warlord. Uh, he could... Like, he could use these Decaying Warrior squads. Like, if you had to discard a card, this would be perfect, because you can play it from your discard pile. He does have another copy of Recycle in hand, so he could discard the uh, Decaying Warrior squad to potentially draw additional shields. But like I said before, uh, the Necron faction is kind of weak in regard to it only has access to one thus far spoiled two-shield value card. It's the Resurrection Orb, which really only works in an elite heavy Necron deck. So we've got a copy of Promotion on a uh, copy of this Deathmark Assassin. We've got just a whole hell of a lot of Necron units sitting here at the table. Uh, we've got a Void Pirate with a promotion at Planet 2, and that's potentially going to be a card and two resources for Parker. Uh, what would kind of suck here is if this Tomb Blade Squadron, I guess if you move it to a planet, I don't know if you can move to the same planet that you're already at, if we were to see a non-Necron scout being played. Uh, looks like Parker has uh, unfortunately passed, so I suppose he's banking on just using a lot of resources on events and uh, just having Kugoth Plaguefather do some ridiculous things. Uh, but for Guy, we see a copy of a Gauss Flare on the Pyrian Eternals. We've got another copy of Deathmark Assassin being played, and this is just going to spell potential or likely disaster for Kugoth Plaguefather. So here at planet number one, uh, all we have to see happen is if Guy wins this planet, that's going to be the game. He'll be at three blue technology icons, three red material type icons, and now let's just see. I guess Parker's got a hell of a lot of shield cards, but this is going to have to be uh, an incredible showing by uh, Kugoth to be able to win this one. Man, just Guy not wanting to give Parker an inch in this just schoolyard beatdown. Uh, on Rakir shows up at planet number two. That's going to be command one at three planets um, for, I guess our Necron, and uh, Parker ends up winning a total of one card, one resource at planet number one. That's instead two cards and four resources for our Necron. We've got a copy of the one cost, or sorry, one copy signature event, Awake the Sleepers. You just shuffle any number of Necron cards from your discard pile into your deck. I guess if that's uh, just you want to, like, let's say if you really want to get your events back or something like that, you don't have the luxury of Harbinger of Eternity 
eternity to allow you to play those or you want to put recycle in your deck again you can just go ahead and do that uh, I'm sure there's going to be more and more synergy for that over time looks like we're about to begin our combat phase and uh, our copy of Deathmark Assassins discards a copy of Vashia Trailblazers so it's going to be able to attack for four and the other Deathmark Assassins discards a copy of Recycle so it's only going to be able to attack for three so these Deathmark Assassins do work I was going to say they work really well with the Tomb Blade Squadron, but it only activates off of non-Necrons, where they would really probably work great is in an Elite deck, where you've got, I don't know, Extermination, that 5-cost event, or Elites that are 5 or higher cost, uh, like the Doomsday Arc, I believe it's called. So, we've got Battle about to erupt at planet number 1, and uh, Kugoth had better hope to high hell he's going to be able to do some ridiculous things. Looks like we've got a copy of Recycle being played conventionally. Is it going to be this Awake? The sleepers being discarded. We've got that uh, decaying warrior squad gone. Reanimation protocol does help kind of ease the shielding burden of our Necron deck. And talk about some hot garbage drawn for combat. A copy of a uh, two earth cased technician and then an Eldar survivalist. Uh, probably not the shield or combat relevant events that Glaive Guy may have been uh, hoping for. Uh, but note, uh, Necrons can only include common army units, so you're not really at this point having a ton of events in your deck because this is just a preview match. We've only got three or so uh, preview articles for Necron cards to go off of. Uh, at the beginning of combat, prior to Kugoth's initiative, we see the Canoptech Scarab Swarm activate the Gauss Flare to destroy that copy of Rotten Plague Bearers, uh, which was exhausted. Kugoth Plaguefather takes a swing, uh, and that's going to be a point of damage on Inquisitor Caius Roth. So Parker has got a total of 10 resources, and now I can only imagine, are we going to see a Nurgling Bomb or what? So it's going to be... Um I guess for each non-Nurgle unit at the planet, its controller must choose to either deal a damage to it or route it. Uh, I guess Kugoth has taken three points of damage from Inquisitor Caius Roth, and we're going to have to see Parker tossing some events out there probably sooner rather than later, uh, lest he just get absolutely obliterated. Perhaps we're going to see Nurgling Bomb played after these fetid hazes. So Inquisitor Caius Roth swung to deal three points of damage to Kugoth. The Purian Eternals have also dealt three points of damage to Kugoth, and uh, now what are we going to see? Are we going to see Fetid Haze or Nurgling Bomb? There we go, that's going to be Fetid Haze, that is remove all damage from Kugoth, it is six. Then the opponent has to deal six indirect damage among uh, army units he controls at the same planet, and you cannot assign more indirect damage to a unit than it has remaining hit points. So the Eldar Survivalist is going to end up soaking two, it's going to be set aside and presumably it's going to die. Uh, note that reanimation protocols is an action, so you'd have to do this after shielding occurs. Uh, the same Han Kinsman soaks one point of damage, and it looks like the death mark are going to soak two, and this death mark is going to soak one. So that's all six points of damage dealt with. And now, are we going to see shield cards used to spare either of these Eldar units? I can't imagine the Necrons are going to be showing a whole lot of mercy uh, in regard to sparing, you know, their slaves from being destroyed during combat. We see that reanimation protocol strip a couple of points of damage off of the Deathmark Assassins. It is going to be able to attack for four. Uh, this one's going to be able to attack for a combined total of seven. This would make nine. Uh, so Kugoth may end up surviving until the end of the combat round, and you know we'll see combat round number two. Uh, but let's see just how much nastiness Kugoth is going to be able to deal out. Uh, certainly if he had a whole hell of a lot more resources, he could do quite a fair bit, but Kugoth has got a just a metric ton of shield cards in hand, and Parker is a very competent player, so I'm excited to see what exactly is going to happen here. Deathmark Assassins deal four points of damage. The de uh, the other Deathmark Assassins swing for three. That's going to be one point of damage de uh, dealt to Kugoth, and now this is going to be the Canoptech Scarab Swarm. They're going to swing for two, and I can only imagine we'll presumably see a copy of Promise of Glory discarded as a one-value shield card. So uh, there's not going to be any Fetid Haze yet, 
but it's going to be another Fetid Haze for six, and then a Nurgling Bomb, and then uh, Kugoth himself is going to be able to uh, deal a lot of damage to all of these just uh, present Necron and neutral units because of his reaction. It's a damn shame Kugoth doesn't have his banner. Uh, interestingly, we see Zinch's Firestorm used as a shield, so I kind of wonder what... Uh, Parker is playing at, it's only going to get all the more difficult for him to deal with some of this incoming damage. I frankly, well, I guess perhaps Kugoth is wanting to... Okay, so we've got uh, Decaying Warrior Squad entering play, played from Guy's discard pile, and let me check to see if he's got another copy of that. He does. Uh, so he could potentially put another one of those into play, and uh, even though he has to use that as an action, and then we could see something like Fetid Haze in response... Um, it could still end up being just disastrous if Kugoth ends up being bloodied, because the instant that that happens, uh, that's going to be GG game over at planet number one. So Kugoth discards another copy of Slanesh's Temptation as a shield. We see another copy of Decaying Warrior Squad entering play, and now it's going to be able to take a swing of its own, and, uh... I guess maybe we'll see Zinch's Firestorm, or perhaps, okay, that's just going to be Promise of Glory, and that kind of indicates to me that we're likely going to be seeing Fetid Haze used now. So Kugoth is sitting at six points of damage. Our Necron player only has one resource left. He's only got a one shield value card, and now what is it going to be for Parker? Is it going to be Nurgling Bomb? No, it's going to be the end of the combat round. So interestingly, I guess if Kugoth attacks, he'll be able to use his reaction to move a point of damage uh, but then he's only going to be at 5 damage and Fetid Haze isn't going to be as useful if we see a swing of 4 he's going to be able to drop it down to 2 but then that would equal 7 and he would be bloodied so it looks like we might have to deal with a somewhat sub-optimal uh, Fetid Haze we might see Nurgling Bomb used now and uh, I guess let's just see what exactly happens our initiative does happen to be in the possession of Kugoth, Plague Father, and it's going to be his swing or his action. So it's Nurgling Bomb is going to be used now. And this is going to be Guy. All of his units are basically either going to have to choose to be dealt one damage or be routed. Um... So I would imagine that's just going to be a lot of damage being dealt out to these units. There's no good routing them. You may as well win the game on this planet, uh, as opposed to prolonging combat. I guess we're in the process of assigning a whole bunch of damage. Uh, just for fun, let's see. The Virulence Plague Squad here has attack value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, so it's got a attack value of 9 at the moment, so it could potentially bloody Onrakir in a single swing if Onrakir were not to retreat. So we've got a whole bunch of damage on all of these non- uh, well, on all of these non-Nurgle units. Kugoth takes a swing. He's going to move a point of damage from himself, presumably onto Inquisitor Caius Roth, and then all we're going to be able to see is that uh, copy of Fetid Haze strip all that damage off of Kugoth, but he's only at 5 points of damage, and if we've got an opportunity for this Deathmark Assassin to swing for four, then that is indeed going to be a, bloody co a bloodied copy of Kugoth Plague Father. So we saw a discarded copy of Awake the Sleepers. It's only going to be, well, it's going to be zero attack damage that uh, Inquisitor Caius Roth takes, but he does get moved one point of damage thanks to Kugoth Plague Father, and this is going to be another copy of Fetid Haze, and that's five points of indirect damage being assigned uh, to these Necron units. It's a little bit difficult to tell and keep track of what unit is being assigned what. Of course, in real life, you'd be placing these damage tokens to the side of these units, but I suppose you... Okay, looks like we've got a couple of dead copies of Decaying Warrior Squad, and then it looks like uh, we also have a dead Canoptech Scarab Swarm, but it's going to allow him the opportunity to return a target Necron faction unit from his discard pile to his hand if he chooses to activate that interrupt, but... 
you know, at this point in the game, it's looking like Kugoth isn't going to be doing so hot, so there's not a whole lot to doing it. It's going to be four, uh, seven, ten, a total of uh, 13 outgoing attack is going to be more than enough to presumably bloody Kugoth, because he's only got three shields, so 13 minus three is, of course, going to be ten, and uh, now I guess let's just wait and see the inevitable victory here for our Necron player as our players uh, wrap up this game over Skype. But Inquisitor is going to swing for three. The Pyrian Eternals is going to make that six. Uh, Deathmark Assassins, augmented up to a three attack value unit, is going to make it nine. And then our other Deathmark Assassins is going to be able to swing for four, which makes it 13. Again, we've only got that three shield value... Uh, sh three shields value worth of damage mitigation. So the Inquisitor is going to deal through uh, modified two points of damage to Kugoth Plague Father. Looks like the stubborn New Yorker Parker is uh, not going to go down without being a uh you know, just uh, not without persevering for as long as he possibly can, so he discards that copy of Promise of Glory. Both of our players go through whether or not they've got any actions, and uh, we see a Zinch's Firestorm played for one. I guess he's going to be able to uh, kill this copy of the Deathmark Assassins, and uh, that is actually going to spare him from dealing one point of damage. Uh, or it looks like Parker isn't actually playing that. Uh, so instead, it's just going to be this unit attacking for three. Uh, minus two is going to be one point of damage to Kugoth. Uh, so Kugoth has just got four HP remaining. We're totally out of cards. And there, Parker calls out the GG. So good game. Well played by both of our players. Congratulations to Guy Lev for managing to pilot Onrakir the Traveler to victory in the first ever Necron faction proxy game I've had the honor of hosting on my channel. Dear viewers, I hope you enjoyed today's game. Again, a tremendous thanks to Guy and Parker for humoring me uh, for proxying probably 14 or so different cards here in Octagon, but be sure to let me know in the comments what you thought of today's game, what you think of on Rakir, what your thoughts are on the Necron faction as a whole, if they seem better or worse than you were expecting, how you would have built your on Rakir deck differently. Differently. And of course, as Parker would very much appreciate my saying, I just want to remind everyone that his deck was very Nurgle-themed. It was meant to be a bit of a punching bag for dear Onrakir here, just because we wanted to give our Necron uh, an opportunity to flex his muscles and test his might in uh, the first ever proxy octagon match. So, I hope you enjoyed this content. Let me know what you'd have done differently in regard to strategy as Onrakir in the comments, how you'd have built your deck differently, and uh, just which of our previewed Necron Warlords you're personally most excited about. But, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, as ever, you're encouraged to share this content, because the more individuals end up stumbling upon these videos, the more people are exposed to Conquest, they might give the game a try, enjoy what they experience, join our community, and of course, the greater we are in number, the bigger message we send to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to continue to develop this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so on Facebook or on Twitter, and especially if you yourself are a content creator, contact me so I can help promote your content, so I can get more eyes on your videos, more ears on your podcasts, or whatever it is that you happen to do. Uh, I always endeavor to to grow this community. If you ever have any inclination to help support the Hive Tyrant, I would be honored were you to make a small contribution to my Patreon page, as every dollar helps me to recover some of my file hosting and operating expenses. But again, I'll just end things by saying thank you very much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.